heart chakra is something to do with our power or attachment, emotional attachment. And the fifth chakra is something to do with fame or popularity. And that, thing, that can cause the jealousy. And if you see the sixth chakra, ego and superego is located here. So that's the source of vanity. So all these things are actually the blockage, the cause of the blockage, or the, or the we can say, enemy for our ascent. Uh, when, but when the Kundalini get enlightened, or when, when our attention get enlightened by the power of Kundalini, then all these things will be cleansed out automatically, spontaneously. So all this lust, anger, greed, attachment, jealousy, vanity will be less and less as we cleanse our chakras. So let's go to the next slide, please. Can we go to the next slide? Yes. So purifying attention by Mother Kundalini and Actually, Shumataji always says, when we talk about attention, she always says, it's about your attention, your, your own attention, not others' attention. So when we purify our attention, we are, we are going to put our attention internally to ourselves and then to work on ourselves, not to others. So that's a very important factor, actually, to start with ourselves. So put the attention inside ourselves, and then we, we can see seven different levels corresponds to seven different chakras. So first one is at the bottom. Physiological or sexual needs can be cleansed to become the innocent being, innocence. And then second chakra can give us the creativity when it's cleansed third one is peace satisfaction generosity as you know and then fourth one fearlessness being the spirit fifth one collectivity and it's the it enables us to realize being part and parcel of the whole and then sixth one is forgiveness thoughtlessness and then seventh chakra is integration of all the qualities. So our attention travels guided by the spirit or enlightened by the spirit from bottom to the top. And, and the force is by Kundalini. The Kundalini drives us horizontally, uh, sorry, vertically to go up. So we go many layers and in each layer, there is something that we have to cleanse by the help of Kundalini. Actually, Kundalini help, uh, cleanses everything. So these are the things that we are trying to do. So now we can try to uh, actually meditate and then put all these qualities, uh, our attention on these qualities and Let's pray to uh, to Shumataji and to Kundalini to cleanse all these negative um, qualities out of our attention. Then, when our attention becomes very pure and very um, much cleansed, what happens is that it becomes very powerful and it starts working. Uh, our internal being starts transforming. And when our, our awareness changes, actually what we change is, what transform is awareness. So our, our awareness changes. As our, our awareness change, outside reality starts changing. That's quite interesting. It's Sahaja Yoga is an Antar Yoga. It's an inner yoga. So we work on our inner being first. And then as our inner being changes, we start encountering the new reality outside. So we can feel some sort of a combination between our inner life and outer life. 
but we work first in our side. So this is a bit of the hypothesis and we can try in our meditation. So let's go into meditation. If you don't have any questions beforehand, I can see somebody is raising hand. Shall I answer the question if you, if you have a question? Terry, I think you have a question. Okay, you are new. All right. So I think we need to break out the room. So yeah, for other we'll people. We will, um, we'll organize that for Terry. Thanks, Satoshi. Yeah. So let's go to the actual meditation part now. So please put Shumataji's picture on our screen just to get the help of Shumataji's pictures vibration. Yes. So first thing we do is to raise our Kundalini and put Bandhan on ourselves. So let's raise our Kundalini three times along our spine. And let's make symbolic knot. And Second time we can do two times. And third time, three. And we can make a protection around us. Seven times back and forth. So again, let's help Kundalini by our right hand to rise up to the seventh center. Here also we can use our attention. And we can put our attention above our head on the seventh chakra. And let's try to see if we can feel the gentle cool breeze coming out of our head. That indicates Kundalini is rising. And somehow we can leave our hand, uh, leave our Attention above our head. So fast we can put our right hand on the floor or towards the mother earth. And we can put our attention on the entire whole left side. Here we can stay within ourselves silently. Mother, Mother Kundalini, please cleanse my left side. Please remove all the 
negative effect, negative effect from the past. Please remove all the negative feeling from my heart. Please make me innocent. And childlike. Mother Kundalini, by your grace, I am the pure spirit. I am the pure joy. Okay, let's put back our right hand on the lap. And now we can put left hand towards the sky like this. And this is how we cleanse our right side of our system. And our attention lies in on our right side. So let's say, Mother Kundalini, please cleanse my whole right side through the element of the ether or the sky. I surrender all my action, all my thoughts, all my futuristic planning to the sky to the element of the ether. Please remove all the worries, all the anxieties, all the fears about the future. I surrender, I surrender everything. Please make me one with the all powering power of divine love. Please make me the drop in the vast ocean. So let us put our left hand on our liver, on the abdomen, on the right hand side. above our belt. 
So this is where the attention resides. So here we can ask and pray to Mother Kundalini. Mother Kundalini, please purify my attention. Please enlighten my attention by the light of the spirit. Please give me the pure attention so that we can penetrate and become subtler and subtler. Please remove all the over activities of our body and mind. Please remove all the excessive heat in our system. Please remove all the aggression and hot temper from us. and allow us to be disciplined disciple of the spirit. Please give me the good quality of the subordinate, the student. Mother Kundalini, please give me the power to learn, to understand in our humility. Now let's put our left hand on the right hand side of our chest. This is the right, right aspect of the heart chakra, right heart. Our attention becomes the sense of responsibility here. We can say, Mother Kundalini, please make me responsible. Responsible person, please make me spirit oriented person.
at the same time, Mother Kundalini, please remove the sense of over-responsibility. Okay, let's put our left hand at the corner of neck and shoulder on the right side. And we can turn our head to the left a little bit. Here we can say, Mother Kundalini, please give me the humility Please make me realize that I am just a part and parcel of the vast whole. Please make me a drop in an ocean. Mother Kundalini, please give me the wholesomeness, the sense of collectivity. Now let's put our right hand on our forehead and we can bend down our head a little bit in front. Mother Kundalini, please give me the power to forgive everyone, including myself. Mother Kundalini, I forgive everyone, including myself. I forgive, I forgive, I forgive. Now let's put our right hand on the Sahasra Chakra, the last center, at the top of the head. Again, we can say, Mother Kundalini, please come to our Sahasrara. Please establish the oneness and integration Please give me the state of yoga. We can slowly rotate the skull clockwise.
Mullah Kundalini. Please make me one. With the all pervading power. Is established a connection. Gradually, we can lift our right hand. Uh, we can check again if you can feel the cool, gentle breeze coming out of our head. And leaving our attention on our sasrara, we can put back our hands on our lap. And we can check by our left hand above our head if you can feel the cool breeze. Okay, let's put back our hands. Let's keep our attention above our head. Let's enjoy the silence for a few minutes. Now, in a good meditative state, let us listen to Shumataji's talk. To become strong Sahajogis is not difficult, because you have all the powers within yourselves. You have the Kundalini within yourselves and you know the way how to become a realized soul. The problems are of you being drag dragged into your ego or into your conditioning. Only two problems, not more. <laughs> like somebody asked, how many turns there are in London? Only two, left or right? So either you go to the left or to the right. All the permutations and combinations of this left and right starts working and then you get into trouble. And then you get into problems. But actually it is a very simple thing. To get out of your ego should be the simplest and that is where you try to understand yourself. 
you see yourself, how you are reacting, where is your attention, what are you doing, what is your attitude towards Sahaja Yoga. So many people think that this is my house, this is my family, this is my car, this is my horse, this is my dog, I don't know how far it goes by, my, 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 my. But nothing is yours. Yesterday, as Kabira has said it, that some cheat, that is the death, will come and take away everything. That is not yours. Then my family, then my children, all this is a nonsense. And so, when you start getting attached to this word, my, there where you fail completely into your own understanding of your ego, you are completely blinded by this ego. First of all, you should say that nothing is mine. Kabira has said that when the goat is living, she goes on saying, my, 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 means I, 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 in Hindi language. It's played a pun on the word my. And when she dies and her intestines are taken out, are, are made into something that spins the cotton, they go on the street, these people, telling people that they are around, they go on playing on that string, which is made from the intestines of uh, these goats. It says, tu hi, tu hi, tu hi, meaning you are, you are, you are. So one need not be like a goat, that till you live you go on saying, I, I, my, 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 when you die, then your intestines are to be taken out and put on that thing just to make the sound tu hi tu hi tu hi. So, this sound of I, I, I is made only by egoistical human beings. But this ego is, is so much identified with you that you think that I am this ego and ego is me. And in that ego, you start doing all kinds of nonsensical things. This ego takes you nowhere. It takes you nowhere but into a complete mire of ignorance about yourself. Ultimately, you become stupid. Others can tell you that you are stupid or you become idiotic or you get a bad name and everybody knows that you are doing all wrong things, but nobody dare tell you because you are to be reached with a barge pole. Such a hot-tempered personality you become, nobody dare come you and say that this is wrong, it should not be done, it's stupid, idiotic. And you yourself in that idiocity and stupidity think no end of yourself. This is the extreme of your ego. But it's nice, we had people like Hitler to see. So if you put Hitler as the ideal egoist, then you will not go on that road, because it's a very slippery road, and maybe one day you'll land up there. The second side of ours, which is a very, looks very morbid, uh, and very mild, is the left side. The movement on the left side is the emotional side. You develop habits with the left side. Now, some people have very dangerous habits, some have simple habits. Like, I have a bad habit or good habit, you may say, that I must put my right hand under my foot because it's all the time working, so I want to control it. So. I put it under my head like this while sleeping and sometimes under my foot. Just to make it a little bit stop working, it works too hard. Just to give it rest. So under my pillow I put it and sleep. 
that I discovered once I hurt myself, that I now cannot put it under my head. I said, it's a very funny habit I have got, but it's not such a dangerous one, it's quite good. So I am continuing with it, but I can get rid of it, it's very simple. But when I get rid of it, I think the people become overactive, so I put it again under my pillow. So as Sahaja Yogi, all your habits should be under your control. Now the habits we have formed through drugs, from drinking, from anything, are very dangerous habits. Also people have their attention, being all the time around. All the time is attention, here, there and there, attracting people, looking after them, not looking after yourself. This attention has to be brought under control, it's very important. That's very simple, that whenever it happens, you just put down your eyes, keep your eyes down. That's one of the ways we allow our attention to fritter away and also our growth becomes stunt. This is a very, very dangerous thing, which in the West especially we have developed. Here also people must read every shop's name. Indians have a bad habit because they have just now started reading, so they want to read everything that they find, anything. So on the road, if there's a road of shops, they'll read every name of every shop, turn round again and see if they have missed anything. It sounds stupid, but they all do it, and all the time they are doing it. So the attention, wherever it goes, has to be under our control. We have to keep it all the time under our control. As Namadeva has said very clearly, and Guru Granth Sahib has written that when a little child is flying a kite, kite, he's talking to everyone, he's playing in a way, but his attention is on the kite. And when a housewife is carrying her duties, putting her child on her waist and working, then she's doing all kinds of work, but her attention is on the child. The ladies who are car carrying three, four earthen pots on their heads, water filled up to the brim, are walking, talking to each other, having mirth and enjoyment, but the attention is on the earthen pot, on their heads. In the same way, whatever adventure you are into, whatever you are doing, your attention should be on your spirit. Then everything is under control and you can never get enveloped into anything where attention should not be lost. So these two problems we have and those problems even after Realization people have it. So please try when you are not meditating, to keep your attention on your spirit. Now, the person who is left-sided or right-sided, he has developed a mechanism within himself to justify himself. Through his intellect, or maybe if they are ladies, they have water power, they'll start crying. And you just don't know what to say to them. If you tell them anything, first thing they will do is to cry, means sometimes I feel there are thousand arrows on my head when they start crying. It's impossible to say anything to them. And if you talk to some men, they'll give so many explanations that you would feel like just going off to sleep. <laughs> it's so boring. It's easy to read some book like War and Peace than to listen to the arguments of such people. But they don't want to see that this is all ego, which is talking, it is not they are talking, it's not their spirit. And if the spirit has to evolve, 
we have to be extremely witnessing in a full way, very alert, extremely alert and witnessing ourselves, what are we doing? Then only we reach the completion of our Realization. Unless and until you reach the completion of your Realization, you can never be masters of your attention and you can never be the enjoyer of your joy and you can never know the Truth fully. To achieve this Satchidananda Swarupa, you have to be extremely careful about the instrument that God has given you, this body, mind and emotions. You have to keep them in check, because wherever your habits are, they can never be joy-giving, it's a joyless pursuit. And where your, wherever your ego is, it's a destructive effort. So both things are detrimental to your growth, apart from that, they are extremely dangerous thing for yogis. So, as you are, in whatever conditions you are, in whatever situations you are, whatever may be the surroundings, like a dirty mire full of creatures and filth, you can become like lotuses. When you become like lotuses, all that is filth, all that is horrible can become fragrant. And this is what we have to achieve. When people will see the lotuses, they'll come to you. Not to see the worms and to see the filth, but to see the lotuses. So please, this time, correct yourself. You don't need anybody to correct you. You just correct yourself, watch out for yourself and see for yourself. If something doesn't work out, just give up. Don't go to extremes for anything. Must learn to give up at a point and be happy about it. If you are content within yourself, if your hand is attached to your body, then you reach up to a point and then leave it. But if it is not attached, if it is disintegrated, then it goes all round and round and round and comes back without anything. That understanding has to be there in you people, because you are standing in the central path and you are attached to the central path, not only, but you are identified with it. So you cannot go too far to the left, you cannot go too far to the right. If you do that, you get lost. Then you are no more a Sahaja Yogi and then no use having you here artificially or superficially, because it will be hypocrisy. Whatever is needed to put you back into right frame, you must accept. And whatever is needed to understand Sahaja Yoga, you have to do. As I have said, please try to learn English language. I cannot learn fourteen languages. It's very difficult. It's surprising how I have learned this English language also. So now to learn fourteen languages, I will to take fourteen avatars again. I don't ask you to learn Marathi, because that's the best language for me to speak, but at least try to learn English and then we can see if you can learn Marathi or Hindi. Ata aplela sangai chakai ki punne bhumi janmalale, shi punne bhumi. Still, we can continue meditating, being in a meditative mood. As Shumantaji said, wherever we are, whatever we are doing, we can keep our attention on our spirit. And in that case, in this case, we can keep our attention on our on above our head.
which is our spirit meets the all pervading power. The meeting point.
Now let us put both our hands in front of our chest, just like this. And then let us check if we can feel some sensations on our fingers. We can compare our left hand and right hand first, whether we can feel warmth or the heat coming out of our palm. Or we can check each fingertips if we can feel the tinglings or burning sensation. This is how we understand ourselves. The place we feel is indicating that particular chakra, which is corresponded to the particular finger, needs some more special attention. So attention can actually work as a means of our self-healing. For instance, we put our right hand on a particular place like this. And that is actually asking our attention, using our attention to guide or to ask Kundalini to come to that particular part of our body. So let us put again our right hand above our head and humbly we can ask again Mother Kundalini please come to our Sasrara. Please establish the connection Connection between our spirit with all the, with the all pervading power of divine love. Mother Kundalini, I surrender. I surrender myself. I surrender my ego and superego. My emotion and thoughts. Let's finish the meditation session now. We can raise our Kundalini together again using our both hands and making a symbolic knot three times again.
and then we can create a half circle protection around us called bandan seven times back and forth. I hope you had a nice meditation. So back to you. I think I will give back to the floor to you, Lin. Yeah, stay on um, Hitashi. Um, we'll um, see if anyone's got some questions. I'm sure they'd like to ask you and uh, hear your response. So we'll be here together, if that's okay. okay. Um, so everyone, that was uh, a great meditation. I uh, hope you all enjoyed that. Um, give us your feedback or if you've got any questions while we've got Hitoshi here, it'd be nice. We can ask him even just how you felt on your hands when you brought your hands up and if it was different. So you should be able to use the chat or else just directly unmute and uh, put your video on that's also fine Sabarish, i can see you're ready to say something hi lynn uh i just wanted to ask uh because sometimes you know like uh, have like you know you have compulsive addiction or compulsive uh, you know you have thought for thoughts that keep on you know like maybe uh, hate or something you know it keeps on coming up uh, during the meditation i feel okay but again throughout the day next day in the morning and you know after some time i'm getting repetitive those things so what would i do what should i do on that one you know itashi do you have a um, good suggestion for Sub subarish yeah uh, thank you for the uh the nice uh question uh, i think it's it's a very fundamental question for all of us especially when we start meditating um i think it's it's natural totally natural that while meditating we might feel a little more stable but uh while we are not meditating we are not we our attention was our attention can be taken to different things and then we feel a little overwhelmed sometimes or even uh restless um and uh you know during shimataji's talk today we heard shimataji saying that while you are not meditating try to put your attention on the spirit mm. and i think it's it's a very much of the uh the help um because there was a nice analogy i think shimataji was talking about uh namadeva was saying i think um while you are talking still uh, ladies are putting the pots above their head and while talking and chatting still they they are their attention is there so it's our, our sanjogis are like that when we were meditating or not meditating we are chatting maybe not chatting but our attention is there because on, on our sasrara because we always want to connect uh, maintain our connection between ourselves to the divine power so this connection is the everything and when we are feeling the connection or maintaining the connection and all else uh, start working spontaneously naturally so keep maintain that connection is very much important and to maintain a connection actually we have to come back to the basic i think to meditate daily at least to have a desire to be connected to to for the kundalini to come up to this uh, place. Doesn't it make sense? Uh, de definitely, Hitoshi. Thank you very much. Uh, I will def definitely remember what you told me. Um, yeah, yeah, it helps my, you know, like obsessive or compulsive thoughts. Yeah, you know, that's why. Thank you. I appreciate it. And I think there was that comment you had uh, during the session as well, um, Hitoshi, where is my attention? And even just uh, asking yourself several times during the day, where is my attention? And that act of, of watching where you've gone and you think, oh, how come I'm thinking of that? And you trace it back. Oh, I reacted to this and that's why I've gone there. And that very act of watching yourself, the time difference between uh, checking where your attention is and reacting to something, it lessens, lessens the impact 
So you react less and less as you watch each day. So that right. could be everyone's homework to watch and see where your your thought process is taking you on a journey. It's always it's advantage, I think for the meditators that we can all for the psychologists that we can watch our attention instead of identifying ourselves to the attention. So we can somehow separate ourselves to the to 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 ourselves and then see ourselves from the distance. That's that's the meditative state, I think. Yeah, and that um just just the watching um unhooks yourself from identifying with that uh, journey you've gone on that you really didn't intend to, but it's just happened because of some silly reaction and uh, getting out of that habit. So it's a just a habit. And it's really good to watch it and it let, loosens that stranglehold of that habit. So it'll be interesting to watch in the days to come, Sabarish, what uh, habits you are able to shed just by watching them. Oh, definitely. Thanks, Lynn. One moment, the mind is here somewhere else, you know, kilometers away. Yeah. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Yeah, I think I've heard uh, um, maybe it was Sri Maharaji said it's like a a wild horse so you have to pick up the reins and ride that horse <laughs> and control it <laughs> <laughs> sure thank you good question samarish anyone else feel free to just unmute unvideo otherwise if you're feeling shy just write in a, in the chat that's also possible even if you're feeling nice, ready for a nice sleep. Or maybe you're in America and you're ready for your busy day. Who's there I can ask? Amara, how are you feeling? Hello. Hi, how was your meditation? How are you feeling? It was good. Mm. And on your feeling, hands, you felt something? Uh, well, I, I just wanted to ask a question about these feelings. Like I have an issue. My biggest issue is that I find it very hard to meditate if I'm not alone at home, you know. It seems like if there is someone in the room or in the house i i cannot concentrate so is there any solution for this um you know i i get up earlier <laughs> if you've got somebody staying in your house so you've got visitors or family or somebody who's not ready to join you in your meditation you just get up earlier than them have your meditation and well is done. That, that's what, what i do in the morning happen? actually yeah Perfect. You've got. Yeah, that's what I do in the morning. Yeah. I can wake up. I can get up at five o'clock. Let's say that's always earlier than others. But what about evening? Like in the evening, I find it very hard to concentrate if I'm not alone. So that's why I think today I didn't feel anything in my hands. So yeah. Yeah, I guess I'm wondering if it affects other people or it's it's my personal issue. Did you feel initially after the realization process? Did you feel coolness or the heat? I usually do. I usually do. I feel a cool breeze in my right hand and warm breeze in my left hand. I see. That's and so that's what. That's why I started to work. And it I depends on the you know, condition. Felt, mm, sometimes I feel heat. I feel I have this, like, this feeling of tingling in my head. It was um, especially strong on the first day. I felt like really strong tingling in my head. Um, and then afterwards, uh, during our next sessions, sometimes I felt like uh, uh, also heat in my head, I think. 
That's that's natural. I think it depends on the condition when you are meditating, and also uh, while we start uh, deepening our attention, actually our attention reaches more and more deeper layer in our awareness. So uh, as as our meditation goes deeper, the the different kind of reaction comes to to our system, and we can feel it. But uh, generally speaking, cool response is is indicating something which is smooth and the heat is indicating some something is you know uh dragging or some some re- re- reaction is happening so uh if you feel some tingling that's the that's the chakra that is needing more special care that's how we understand uh-huh. ourselves yeah Okay. And, uh, is well, great. all in all, I enjoyed. Thank you so much for this dictation. Thanks, Amara. Very good to uh, hear your question. Uh, I was just going to read Thank Sarita's, you. Sarita's comment in the, um, in the chat. She said, hi, all. Well, I'm feeling very relaxed and refreshed. A lot less thoughts today. My day has started and I'm ready to continue having a great day. Nice, Sarita, thank you. Yep, hope everyone else has had a, a great day as um, Andrew's also posted there. Anyone else want to um, unmute? Ah, oh, yes. Um, uh, Nada is saying she likes she liked um, Sabarisha's question, and then she likes the re- repetition of the sayings when meditating. Um, so yeah, actually, that was a very nice slide with uh, some of the quotes of Shumadaji Hitoshi. Maybe we can put that slide up again. Yeah. Andrew, is that possible to get that? Just uh, it was one of the initial slides that Hitoshi had. There were some very lovely quotes, which might be nice for us all to have another look at after having uh, seen Shumilaji's video and uh, had a nice meditate. Ah, yes, this is nice. Mm, very very nice quotes you got there. It's um interesting to um to read them again and the um sensation and the um depth of understanding of them really changes after you've had a meditation and uh, heard Shumadaji talking about the attention. A different understanding now of these quotes. It, amazing. It's the same where uh, you can hear the same talk even several times and it's different every time because your layers have peeled off <laughs> so that experience is always different no? somehow it is it is just uh, really really interesting i think we're all uh, in a nice uh... oh no here's another message so Gidris, thank you, Gidris. Um, if I practice more often, does the healing happen faster? That is quite possible. What do you say, Hitoshi? Yes, I think it's 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 very much possible, and very much likely. I think Kundalini is the healing power, counseling power, redeeming power, bandhuli one. So surely. Uh, Practice medita- practicing meditation leads to the, the healing. Yeah. Um, of course, we don't want to, as long as your heart feels to do it. So you're not punishing yourself with the practice. So you don't go out of balance, <laughs> within balance. <laughs> so. Ah, um, Gedris okay. was feeling tingling on all the fingers, Hitoshi. Yeah, the, the whole system is being cleansed. I mean, yeah. um, that the, the process is going on. 
hopefully by by the grace of kundalini power it will soothe down when the process is done and then you start feeling enjoying but till then i think you need to be patient to to yourself to give your time to more time and then wait it's a bit like a waiting whatever we can do we do and wait <laughs> yeah we have to be patient with ourselves so we're yeah. We're our kid. We're looking after, <laughs> so right. we don't we don't want to punish this kid too much, because <laughs> sure. oh, she'll um, complain. <laughs> <laughs> so nice questions, everyone. I think uh, maybe we can all um, raise our kundalini and put a bun down and we can uh, finish with some nice music um, and uh, meet again tomorrow. Thank you so much for that uh, session, Hitoshi. It was really lovely. Enjoyed it a Thank lot. You very much. Thank you. So thank you everyone for joining. And uh, I was serious about that homework. So you can observe where your mind is taking you through the day. So we want, we want to hear some funny stories of um, some thoughts that took you on a journey that you observed during your day. So we'll, um, in the, uh, the chats at the end of the day tomorrow, we'll um, hear your funny stories. So that's your job for tomorrow. And of course, to raise your kundalini and have a little meditate at the other end of the day, tonight if it's your morning, and tomorrow morning if it's your night. So thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Hitoshi. So nice. Thank you.